When writing for the Football History Boys, there is only one decade in particular that has appealed to us more than any other, the 1950s. Of course, when discussing the pivotal moments of the 20th century, they are often attributed to the roaring 20s or the swinging 60s. However, in terms of football, the 50s provided perhaps the most important period of 10 years throughout the history of the sport. What do you think of when someone says to you the 1950s? Elvis Presley? Rock and Roll, the Cold War, Civil Rights, Television. Following the Second World War, the global situation was at times on a knife edge, with US-Soviet relations at times bringing Orwellian visions from fantasy to possibility. On the other hand, technological advances and the globalisation of industry would begin to bring a world closer in a sense, with arts and culture being utterly transformed. The list could go on and on, But what was important not to forget in the time of such change was sport. Sport played a key role in the decade, with football at the very forefront of it. The state of British life was rapidly evolving also. Following years of economic regrowth and the inevitable post-war austerity, the standard of living generally improved. The formation of the NHS provided free healthcare, and consumerism began to provide working households with more ways to spend their new income. This in time led to an increase in spectatorship at football grounds and more money within the game. For the better, we'll let you decide. Indeed, the decade was one in which British football opened itself up to the world game. It was to be a decade of difference in terms of class and identity in the nation. Was Britain the superpower it once was, or was it needing to find a new role in an ever-changing political and economic spectrum? It was not until after the Second World War that British football began to wake up and realise it was not so imperious as the illusion it had created for itself. For Richard Holt, the 1950s was the decade in which such chauvinistic condescension from the English began to look foolish. The year 1953 may not mean much at first, but in terms of football history, it is pivotal. Alongside the coronation of Elizabeth II, Atoms of Peace, and the conquering of Everest by Edmund Hillary and Tenzig Norgay, football was about to change forever. Perhaps unsurprisingly, two of the decade's most pivotal moments come from Wembley Stadium, the first of which holds a certain sense of nostalgia to British sport, the Matthews Cup final. The introduction of television had made the match the first major sporting event, at least the second half, in which millions could watch and enjoy from the comfort of their homes. The FA Cup by the 1950s had already been established as an icon of nationality, and in 1953 it was a symbol of social unity and harmony in the aftermath of World War II. Fortunately for the crowd, the match was an all-time classic, with Blackpool beating Bolton 4-3 thanks to a Stan Mortensen hat-trick and a man-of-the-match performance from the wizard of the dribble, Sandy Matthews. Within days, universal calls for Matthews to be knighted were found all through the English media. However, despite such highs, the most intriguing and important moment of the decade, in a footballing sense, came in November 1953. In a game now dubbed as the match of the century, the unbeatable, at least at home, three lines, came up against Gustav Sebez's magical Hungarian Magyars. The match has no shortage of relevance to the way in which the game was totally revolutionised by Puskas, Koshis and Co. For many, this was not the moment at which English football began to decline, but the moment at which it was recognised. Tactically, Walter Winterbottom's side had been totally outplayed. The famous WM formation had been shown up by the Hungarians' ruthless speed, skill and intricate passing. Frank Puskas himself was seen by the English as overweight and no match for the defensive stalwart Billy Wright. But one dragged back later begs to differ. The 1950s, for all its promise of progression, was not free from the clutches of tragedy. 1958. In February of that year, the Manchester United football team was travelling home from a European Cup tie with Partizan Belgrade. Following a brief stop to refuel in Munich, Heavy snow created a slushy surface on the airport's runway. Despite two previous takeoff failures, one more was attempted, leading to the aircraft, which was carrying the Busby Babes and a number of journalists, to plough through a fence in a nearby field. The result was fatal. 
eight first team players, including staff fullback Duncan Edwards, three of the staff, eight journalists, and four others were killed, shocking the entire nation. The end of the decade was indeed one of the most progressive in terms of footballers' wages. In a turn of events which was sure to divide opinions, the eradication of the maximum wage for players changed the way we see football forever. The PFA had grown in influence during the first half of the 20th century, fighting for the rights of its members. Injuries or terminations of contract could be catastrophic for a footballer in the 1950s, with early retirement leading to limited opportunities. In turn, this would lead to a number of the country's finest players beginning to ply their trade abroad. Welsh legend John Charles was an example of this, with his move to Italian side Juventus. Indeed, by 1959, the gap between workers' wages and footballers was getting smaller, with no profit to be made by an increase in television coverage and general commercialisation of the game. So what would happen? That's a story for the 1960s. So there we have it. In Britain, at least, the 1950s was a decade of immense change and revolution on and off the football pitch. The wider change in culture, class and identity was to be mirrored within the beautiful game. British football was shown to be backwards and not as mighty as it once thought. If the nation was the sick man of Europe following the Second World War, the state of its national sport surely proves this. However, events like the defeat to the Hungarian Golden Team in 1953 or the growth of the PFA brought with it a wake-up call and a realisation that Britain was not quite as imperious as it once was. The decade wasn't totally revolutionary, Moreover, it laid the foundations for change to be developed in the coming decades. The 1960s would highlight this, with Beatlemania, civil rights and of course, the 66 World Cup. Thank you for listening to a narration of one of our blogs. You can find the link to the blog in the description below. You can also find the link to our book, Football's 50 Most Important Moments. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.